Hello everyone, and welcome to Software Architecture Monday. My name is Mark Richards. In Lesson 156, a little while ago, I talked about the Zachman framework for enterprise architecture. Well, in this lesson, I want to do the same thing, only talk about TOGAF, the Open Group Architecture Framework, in 10 minutes. You can get a listing of all the lessons I do at Software Architecture Monday on my website at developer2architect.com slash lessons. And here you can find a listing of all of the lessons plus some helpful links and also a description of each of those lessons. But today's lesson happens to be about TOGAF, the Open Group Architecture Framework. Now, let me show you the overview of TOGAF and then kind of focus in on the real engine of TOGAF, what I usually get excited about. So we have business drivers and goals, and those ultimately lead to new business capabilities. Well, sitting right between this chasm <laughs> happens to be what's called the ADM, the Architecture Development Method. Think of this as like the engine of TOGAF. So it's running idle right now, but we have a business need, a new initiative. This starts up that architecture development method. And this process basically, which I'm gonna show you in a little bit, produces business solutions, which then feed back into those business capabilities. Now, during this process, uh, we create and reuse uh, artifacts, reusable assets, building blocks that we can form in what's called an architecture content framework. Then we have two other components within TOGAF, and that's the architecture capability framework, which manages a lot of the project management aspects of a particular initiative. And then the enterprise continuum and all the reference models, uh, which continually create a feedback loop so that we can ensure that what we did was actually accurate and correct. But what I really want to focus on is what most people know TOGAF for, and that's the ADM, the Architecture Development Method. Now this, like I said, is the engine of TOGAF. Let me go through um, each of these, because remember Zachman uh, was really a description, a documentation of the enterprise. Uh, TOGAF is quite a different animal than the Zachman Enterprise Framework. You see, TOGAF is really an initiative-based process rather than a way of describing the enterprise. And it consists of a set of phases. Now, each of these phases describe either transformation or governance associated and necessary to facilitate change based on a new architecture vision. So well, let's take a brief tour of all of these phases and how TOGAF actually works. So the preliminary phase is the very initial part of TOGAF. Uh, this is where we do all the preparation, we decide on who needs to be involved, the overall initiation, and most importantly, we customize the TOGAF process. Uh, we decide which phases we don't need, uh, which phases to include, uh, which phases to modify, uh, for example, uh, during the preliminary phase, I usually always add something extra, and that's that Y model from the Zachman framework on Lesson 156. This, this is one of the things I really love about TOGAF, because this process can be customized to a small initiative, or it could be customized to a rather large initiative, like getting hold of all of our data across the enterprise, or maybe an app modernization to microservices. Um, so it can be modified, which I really, really like about a TOGAF. Well, everything starts with phase A, the architecture vision. Uh, this is the initiative scope. Uh, this really defines the scope of the changes that are necessary. It identifies all the key stakeholders that are involved with this particular initiative. It creates that architecture vision of where we're going and also gets buy-in 
from all the stakeholders in agreement about the architecture. Now, once this happens, we start the next three phases. And these don't have to necessarily go in sequence. Uh, they can go at the same time as well. And this is phases B, C, and D. The thing I like about TOGAF is it separates the business from data, from technology. And I really like that piece because a lot of other things have to change just be, in, in, rather than just the architecture. Um, for example, um, phase B is the business architecture. Um, this describes any possible workflow changes, organizational change, strategies necessary to support our architecture vision. Sometimes we transform an architecture, maybe undergo an application modernization effort, uh, a major transformation or replatforming. Sometimes it's only technology, but other times it does change business workflows. It changes the team topologies, the structure of our, of our, our teams. Uh, that's where all this business architecture change would be identified. The next phase is phase C, the information systems. This is all about the data, the logical and physical data models that need to change in order to support our architecture. A really good example um, could be the move from a legacy system during app modernization over to microservices, which would require us to break apart a monolithic database into separate databases, one for each service. Uh, that would all be described in phase C, all about the data. And then we have phase D, the technology architecture. Um, this is where we specify all the things like the hardware, the software, additional platforms, infrastructure that needs to change in order to support our architecture vision. Now, once all three of these phases kind of are defined, uh, we end up getting into the phases that are more involved with governance and planning. And the first of those is phase E, opportunities and solutions. I must admit, not crazy about the name because it's hard to describe, um, but really this is where we create a roadmap, really showing the iterations and the corresponding projects to satisfy and get to that architecture vision. Um, each iteration is an opportunity uh, to basically describe some sort of business value, but also generate various projects uh, that would then get handed down to uh, development teams on various applications. Phase F is really our migration planning. This is where we take the roadmap and these, those initiatives and also um, those projects and we qualify those projects. We undergo dependencies, priorities, uh, staffing, cost, effort, and overall risk of particular projects and really refine how we're really going to get there. Now, phase G is implementation governance. Um, this phase really describes all the acceptance criteria for knowing we're done, <laughs> and also um, tracks any of the outstanding issues. Uh, this is usually the phase where we identify a lot of unique constraints. Uh, maybe it's unique challenges associated with this initiative. Uh, but also, uh, we leverage here in implementation governance various fitness functions to ensure that alignment uh, between the implementation and the corresponding architecture. The last phase is phase H, the architecture change management. Um, this is really that governance, governance and measurement during implementation to make sure that we're in line with the architecture vision and we identify and manage and mitigate risk all along the way in each iteration. And that is the core TOGAF engine, what's called the ADM, the Architecture Development Method. Well, there's a lot to TOGAF, and there's certification classes available, lots of documentation, um, but this was just a short 10-minute video uh, really to give you another perspective of a different kind of methodology uh, that, uh, and framework uh, that we can use to create architecture.
Well, this has been Lesson 172, TOGAF in 10 Minutes. Uh, stay tuned in two more Mondays uh, for the next lesson in Software Architecture Monday.